Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, welcome. And if you're not, um, thank you very much for keep on coming back. That's really nice of you. And I wanna give a special shout out to my patrons. Now you can see this bad baby right here. This is what's recording me right now. This lavia mic here means a lot to me because it's uh, been bought using the money that the patrons have uh, given to me. So um, anything that you uh, give to me on Patreons goes back into the channel. So I'm very, very thankful um, that I'm able to use this right now. And hopefully there are more things yet to come as well. On with the show, but just before, if you want to be a Patreon, then the links are down below. Thank you to my Patreons once again. So it's my birthday today and that means I get to do whatever I want and I want to do a story time. So here we go. This is the first time I've done a story time on any kind of format. So I really hope that you enjoy it. Let me know if it's something you like and you want more of because I do have more stories. It just happens to be that way. So this is a short trip. It's a 10 minute long caving trip all in all. Actually getting to the cave, that kind of makes it around maybe half an hour. Um, it's not a long trip and there's a good reason why. It kind of failed as a trip but I see it as a big win because I found out a lot about myself. So we tried to find this cave called Sidetrack and Sidetrack is a notoriously small cave and I'm thinking oh brilliant I can't wait I love small things. You guys know I don't have claustrophobia. I do have claustrophobia. I do, it's, I just don't show it. But anyway, sometimes I do. Okay, we've seen the videos of me doing all of that stuff. We don't need to go into it now. But, oh my gosh, so I'm a bit nervous because on the way there, they're describing the, on, on the cave description, they're describing it to me, my, my teammates, and they're saying, oh, it's like 200 meters long and it's all basically one big crawl and I'm like oh oh that's fine a crawl for 200 meters but then they go on to describe some of the bits where it gets really 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 small and I'm thinking oh god I don't feel like that today and here's the thing right I am good when I'm good but I know when I'm not, right? So I was just, that day, I was just not feeling it mentally. And it was probably a few factors. The night before was a very late night for me and there were other emotional factors that I won't explain, but there were just some things hanging on my head and I didn't feel right. I didn't feel on my A game. And I knew that was gonna affect my performance and it did. So anyway, we pull up to the cave, we walk to the cave and it's in a quarry. So we're looking at this gigantic quarry and it's so beautiful and I can't tell you how much I love quarries and I know that's insane. There's something beautiful about quarries. I love quarries. They are so open and gorgeous, but also there's, they're scary and I like how scary they are. There's something deathly weird about them. Um, the kind of like the abyss of land that was never meant to be there, dug out. Anyway, we're in a big quarry and I can't believe my eyes and there's this small little oval entrance to the cave that you can walk into and it's very nice and spacious. I'm like, okay, but then it goes straight into it. So we've abseiled down the quarry phase to get here and it's cold. I should mention, it's cold, which would be fine, but the wind is the wind is really bad and when you get bad wind <laughs> when you get bad wind you get wind chill right so yeah you might be cold but if anything any of your clothes get wet the wind actually makes it a hundred times worse and that's when you can get things like hypothermic quite easily so um obviously that's not going to happen on on that day because we you know we're, we're very intelligent cavers so we were just you know um moving around a lot and and keeping away from the wind as much as possible so we drop down into the quarry face as quickly as possible on our ropes and then we go into this large uh, oval face uh, semicircle cave entrance and um it gets very small very quickly and very muddy very quickly which i'm used to but on this certain day i just felt it in the back of my head going not today just not today. I just do not feel like doing this. And um, 
there were bigger people on the trip with me, which is a really good thing to point out because if there are bigger people on the trip, you know, you can kind of calculate in your head, which is what I was doing. Oh, there are, there are bigger people than me on this trip going first. So even though it's small right now, if they can do it, I can do it because I'm smaller than them. That's that. That's fine. I can do this. I can do, I can do this. And I'm saying this to myself in my head, like, I can do this. I, it's fine. Bruh, it was not fine. Like, I was anxious as hell. And um, I, I, didn't, I didn't feel good. And I, I can't even place my finger on why. Um, perhaps the small tube in front of me. So it really, it got smaller and smaller to the point where um, I had to turn my face, my head to one side because you didn't have enough room to just keep it up. So um, we weren't on all fours. We were slipping and sliding on our bellies, which again, I'm used to, but today it just felt like a no-go and it really did get smaller and smaller um, in awkward angles as well. And then I hear at the very back, so there's two people behind me and there's one turning spot where the chamber gets quite larger, still very small, but it gets larger so you could swivel round on your belly and head back if you wanted to. And um, I almost approaching this little chamber and I hear somebody behind me, two people back, um, kind of make a lot of noises that made me feel anxious, like, oh no, oh no, what is that kind of noises? And uh, yeah, that, that doesn't help me, actually. Um, which I'm also, at the same time, I'm okay with it. Um, this, this person is, was absolutely right to make those noises if they were feeling anxious. Because what they saw, because I hadn't looked up yet, I hadn't looked up at the ceiling around me. What they saw as they looked up was a line of spiders just lining the walls. And... Um, she told us that and I heard that my head did this like absolutely not can't can't continue can't do this um <laughs> that was like I oh, do you know what I am I'm I'm kind of scared right now and it I love these moments because you kind of freeze a bit and I'm like oh this is a really good time to feel how scared I am you know you just kind of step back because you know you're safe it's like oh I am really, really scared. I'm safe, which is good, so I can just stop and stay here and kind of recognise this, this thought of how scared I am. Um, yeah, I am scared and I want to get out of here. And my heart's racing and I'm not in a good place um, to turn around yet. And I'm not good with spiders. I'm very scared of spiders. And um, she, the, the lovely young woman at the back, she kind of like, oh, I can't do this unless somebody kills all of these spiders, I am not doing this. And um, she said that she was gonna leave um, after a lot of kind of like going back and forth in her mind for maybe a couple of minutes. And I was like, do you know what? If she's leaving, I'm not gonna leave her out in that cold or that wind chill. And it's a great excuse for me to get out of here because just not feeling it. And I kind of realized within that moment, whoa like normally I'd be so good at this I would just like go through it and get to the end of the cave come out and think wow I press myself through this really hard challenge but today no I was not going to be pressing myself through a hard challenge my head wasn't in that um in that state and I kind of realized that boundaries change in that moment I was like whoa Sometimes my boundaries, I like to push them and say, oh, I feel uncomfortable here, so I'm gonna go straight into it and keep pushing myself onwards. But this time I was like, yeah, my boundary is here and today that is not moving forward for anybody. Good day, sir. <laughs> Goodbye. And um, I realized, yeah, that is actually okay. And I could actually be a better woman from this or, you know, whatever, better person. So I went forward a little bit and did the swivel round bit, head still kind of like this in the mud. And I'm wet now because the floor uh, had puddles in it. So that was great. Uh, moving back through, catch up with this young lady 
call a young lady, she's the same age as me. I'm a young lady. It's my birthday today, by the way. Did I say that? I don't know if I said that. <laughs> anyway, we're moving back through and she's like, did you see the spiders? And I'm like, no, I'm intentionally looking down because if I see one goddamn spider, I will scream. I will actually just panic. And I've had this before where I came out of a mine in the middle of a village and the it was a very small crack in, in the wall you could get through. And again, the walls were lined with spiders and big ones as well. So I was screaming my way out, literally screaming. And that was actually, that mine was hanging just above a little village in the uh in in nature you know in a little little village in in the peak district and i'm pretty sure that everyone thought i was dying that day in that village they probably thought i was being murdered but yeah i was like i remember getting out i remember like wriggling on the, on the grass to get all the spiders off whilst like freaking out very scary so she asked, did you see any of the spiders? I said, no, I do not want to see any of them. Thank you very much. I'm looking down at the ground when moving out and we pop out together. We leave together. So I'm practicing being a good uh, cave leader right now. And I'm trying to get every situation I can under my belt. And this, I, I felt this was just a really good situation. So I just took control and I knew the one big bad situation that we're in right now is the wind chill so the winds are actually picking up it's starting to rain and hail and now our clothes are wet from being inside this cave so this is like the bigger kind of situation that went through my mind is how am i going to guide this person out safely which i know they're capable of doing on their own very capable woman but i just somebody needs to take control there needs to be some sort of leader in the situation i was like damn i'm gonna just go for it um, so I'm really proud of myself. So I was like, okay, right, let's get our, our belaying kits on. Uh, they're called SRT kits, but uh, let's get our kits on and get back up that rope and back up that ladder that we had set down ourselves previously about half an hour ago. And I realized the wind chill is really bad. So I, and this person said they were cold at the very beginning and I wasn't cold at the beginning. So I was like, okay, it's time for me to go up first. So I'm gonna be go up the quarry side and at the very top of the quarry where it's windiest, I'm gonna wait where it's windiest and I'm gonna get the coldest first so that this person can have less of the effect of that wind chill. And um, so I go up first and I, I run through a few times like what to do with the SRT kits, how to get back up the rope and back up the ladder. And then when I'm done, I drop down my SRT kit to them and then they go up. Um, it takes them quite a while to get the kit on. And I begin to absolutely freeze. I'm not gonna lie, it was horrid. Um, I was really cold and I started running on the spot for 10 minutes, I think there. Um, just to feel uh, my fingers again. I really hate it when you can't feel your fingers or toes. That's beside the point. They, well, no, it's not when you can't feel them. It's fine when you can't feel them. It's when they burn and it's really painful. That's what I hate. Anyway, so I'm waiting up there doing some press-ups, doing some squats, running, running, running in my, in my caving kit. And they're kind of slowly getting their SRT kit on, making their way up. And as soon as this person at the very bottom begins to make their way up, the others come out and they're like, yeah, it was too small. It just got smaller and smaller and smaller until they couldn't fit anymore. So they went back, they nudged their way back. So good for them. But it did make me think that even though on the surface it seemed like Oh, this was a failed um, trip. Actually, I learned a lot from doing this trip and it was something that I really felt was very enjoyable and I wanted to share it with everyone on my birthday and maybe I'll do some more kind of um, story times because I guess it's not every day you can talk about your experiences in caves, is it? So, um, but yeah, I, th I think what the most interesting thing I learned was just that my boundaries changed very 
um, stubbornly and at one point I would be like yeah I can push myself forward and I'm gonna get through this and then at other points I'm like actually no if I push myself here too much I'm not actually going to enjoy the sport whatsoever and I need to back out and that's based on my psychology that's uh, based on my own mind and I think my own mind changes all the time uh, so, uh, thank you very much for watching. Again, thank you to my patrons. You're beautiful. Thank you so much for um, supporting this channel. Again, if you'd like to support this channel, the links are below. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you next time. Thank you for listening. And um... <laughs> it's my birthday today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I'm going to let my hair down. Goodbye now. Going to, I'm going to go out now and I'm going to enjoy my birthday. Whatever, whatever comes of it, who knows? <sighs> Make myself.